Mm, let's see if we can find some people. No. No. Oh, um, these are slopes, as you can see, by the sort of arrows. I'm currently using a text, well, a, um, what are they called? Tile sets. Because, uh, these, this game is just, as it is, is an ASCII, which is basically, you know, uh, com well, all sorts of letters and symbols and such. So, but anyways, let's just go back to these slopes. As you can see, this one, these are all pointed up in this tile set. So you can go up by pressing any of the numpad keys. And you can also see by the uh, these here downwards, you can go down and so on. Let's go and try and find a place I can actually jump down. There aren't any places, uh, maybe here. Yeah, as you can see here, there's no slope. There's only a way down. You can press look and you can press the greater than or less than button to go up and down. I don't know where they are on, for example, American keyboards or, you know, English keyboards because I don't use one. But these are basically up and down uh, with the less than and greater than. You can look far above, far down and so on. But one more thing you can do is you can actually jump down from a higher place by holding alt and pressing whichever direction you want to go. So as you can see in the bottom left, you see where would you like to move? And if I press A, I'll move to open space, west, slash, air, which means it's drop. Let's do that. And you see I just slammed into an object, which means I hit the ground and my right lower arm took the full force of the impact, bruising the skin through the rope read fiber rope. Enter to remove that announcement. Now let's stand up by pressing S. Yeah, see, now I'm standing. And you can also see down here, you have speed. This tells you how fast you move. Ah, uh, a thousand is pretty good. Uh, you get high speed by increasing your agility. So. You can lie down, stand up, and you see your speed decreases accordingly when you go down, when you stand up, and lie down on the ground. Uh, yeah, so we also have our weapon, currently equipped weapon, silver whip, and our current armor, which is the Osprey leather dress. Let us look at the inventory. Uh, you access the inventory by pressing I. And here you can see all the items I have. For example, the silver whip is in my left hand, my cop shield is in my right hand, and so on. You also have a backpack, uh, which you have on your back, but it says upper body. And you also have, for example, a sheep leather water skin, which is in the Osprey leather dress, or on it, or whatever. I don't really know what it is. And you can see contained within that leather... Uh, Water skin is water, as you can see by pressing N there to get the uh, sort of description. And you can, you can see this is sheep leather water skin. Yeah, you need to drink and eat in this game. So let's look at the uh, backpack. Inside the backpack, you see I have oysters, which is my food. You get pretty much a random type of food whenever you start. You can get all sorts of weird stuff like now I have oyster I don't know why and I also have a large cup of dagger and that's about it for my inventory to go to the next page and well previous page press the asterisk key or the uh, slash key forward slash escape when you're done Whew. so let us look at how to place stuff in your inventory if I can yes so I could I pressed P to place, and I could place my silver whip in my backpack, like so. Now you can see I don't have it equipped, but I'm also going to place my copper shield, like so. Now they're both in the backpack. You don't really want them to be in the backpack. And to remove them from said backpack, you press R. You find out where your copper whip is, for example, and you remove it, like pressing Q. 
and then you take it out and yeah you can see down here you have it weapon silver whip and you do the same thing with your well you took you took it out and it automatically equipped in your uh in the first available hand which will be my let's see where is it oh i need to press inventory it's in my left hand then we just remove cop shield and that should be my right hand apparently this girl right here is left-handed now let's look at inventory uh to remove an item you press r again and for example i'll, re I'll remove my loincloth right now so i've removed my loincloth and you can see it's in my right hand you put for example place it place it by pressing p in your backpack like so and then you can remove it again but this doesn't auto equip and there's a reason sort of for that but i don't know why but uh to equip certain items you need to press w and then you just find whatever item you want for this i want a which is llama loincloth and i equip that yeah and you can also do the remove by pressing r for your backpack to take it well take it in your hand which i now have in my right hand and i could just press where and backpack you can see do the same with quivers and so on okay let's look at eating because eventually you will get thirsty actually i'll take that later uh yeah because we are this is going to be fairly lengthy unless i die then it won't be fairly lengthy but let's pick up this axeman because i see one so let's have him join us things go fairly quickly whenever you've learned how to do this so you press k to activate the speech command you choose whoever you want to talk to like so press enter and enter and enter whatever and then you do service for example and here you can see a creature of the night has our people carrying in fear uh dope scar is a short walk to the southwest seek this place and kill uzin parched strokes body corrupted beyond recognition he assumes a beastly form to terrorize us you can press enter to continue the dialogue here this wild fin fiend has killed seven in his lust for murder. Beware, it is said that only copper harms the creature. It doesn't really do that. Other arms may not cut so deep, but if you have the copper, use it because it's better. Now, I have a copper shield, so I'm most likely to attack him with that. Okay, so now we come into another essential part of Dwarf Fortress Adventure Mode, which is traveling. You do this by doing capital T so you have to press shift and T uh, you have to as you can see here this stop here means uh, basically uh, I think it's less than or greater than I'm not too sure which one of those they, it is I think it's less than yes less than if I'm not too, too mistaken uh, and then you have clouds which you can press C to look at uh, doesn't really help me it doesn't there aren't really any clouds so but let's press m to get up this this map this is basically the local map it's quite zoomed in but what i want to do is press m twice to see this screen here as you can see these are villages here this is stronghold this well and i think these are ca bigger cities or capital cities i'm not sure i can't read these too well yet but these are also villages here and up here you have dark fortresses and can we look at those no we can't um i don't think so no uh not for now and then you have q which is our quest log or oh, our log and here you have tasks by pressing a small t uh, you have to press capital q to and access that log and to zoom into a certain location you press z and as you can see here zoom to selected i have this automatically selected because that's the only task i have now you can see this guy is in this area here in this stronghold or capital city whatever it is and you have to move there you can see there's a path but 
I don't know why it goes through the sea. Don't ask me. You also have sites. As you can see, this guy knows quite a lot of sites here. You navigate this by pressing plus and minus. You can also zoom to these locations by pressing Z. And these go, actually they don't go into in length. I don't really know how they, they're sorted. Don't ask me. And you have entities like realm of bearings. I have no idea what that is. So let's press M to look. It's a civilization. I just pressed M to get that info map slash info as you can see site government the band of paths and so on um, what else do we have we have regions static gulf it's over there field of noses yeah whatever and but the thing we want to do now is go to tasks and zoom there now we found out where we want to go which is right here and if i press escape now You'll see here, you have that map, same map, and I want to go over here. And you travel like any other by pressing the numpad or arrow keys or whatever you decide to do. So we're moving now, but we've encountered a river, as you can see here. Now these can't be crossed, and neither can this sand over here. Uh, this is sand. I don't know what this is, I think it's plains or something, these ends and whatever they are. This is more of a grassy area sandy area I think there's grass you maybe forest forest or maybe the light green is I can't read this too good either but what I want to do now is as you can see as soon as I move into town it zooms in and I wanted to go there because there's there are usually bridges in uh, areas like that so as you can see here this is a lair and he wasn't actually in the city is actually in this layer, so let's move towards that. These rivers here, that you know, the light blue ones, are actually very shallow, so you can walk across them. Now let's move here. Now I press less than key, and now you can see I'm in travel mode again. So let us start moving. We are gonna go all the way over to. Let's see. You can see here there are trees, here are different minerals. You can look at them with the L key. You can see this rough hewn rock salt wall. These are. This is ash for some reason. Oh, the ash trees, prickle berries. And you can see open spaces. If you press less than, I can look at, for example, maple sapling, blade weed, long land grass. But that's not usually a thing you want to look at. If you see up here in the top right corner you see TSK which means task you can see that is towards the south southeast to the north it's a specific uh, area like a city or whatever and if you move north you'll most likely find it so let's move towards south southeast and see if we can find it now it moves to east northeast which means I'm very close and you can see here this is two down two downwards because I can't move down there. So let us move up and left. Now you can see this is a layer. As you can see by the task, it's directly south. If I move diagonally um, towards the downwards right, I'll, it looks change to west. So it's pretty accurate when it comes to this. So let's move downwards. Just move towards the slope. And here you can see we're underground. Uh, you can sneak by pressing Shift S, which is big S. Now I'm sneaking. And you see my speed down here is reduced significantly. Now let's just move. By doing this, you can take people by surprise. Uh, as you can see there, there's the vampire I'm hunting. And if I press now, I'm going to throw something. I press T, and I choose whatever I want to throw, like the large copper dagger in this case. And I just move towards him and press Enter. And the peasant stands before you. Using Nessie Muddy, the peasant. I am using parched strokes. Yeah, as you can see, using park strokes was the person I was looking for. Uh, death of Logum Granite Trot, who was returned to the rock and muck from which he, it spawned. Prepare to die. So I threw it at him, and in here, you can see the spinning large copper dagger strikes the peasant in the left lower arm, bruising the muscle. But muscle, you've been spotted. 
I mean, you've been spotted basically. Press enter to exit that. You don't really have to, you can. 